Hello and welcome to an all new episode of The Spotlight. I am one of your hosts, Kente, all the way live from Los Angeles, California. I am so happy to be here tonight with uh, the one and only Jen, my co-host. How are you doing, Jen? Hey, I'm doing good. Really excited to talk about some cool stuff. Now, I know we talked about this on the show that we did on uh, Monday night, or I'm sorry, Tuesday night, but I feel like I have to do that because there's people that are fans of yours and they know that you were in Hawaii. So please just let our viewers who who uh, know and love you know that you are doing okay. You know, it's funny. I have probably gotten, I don't know, a, a lot, a lot of messages asking me, People seem to think that Hawaii is like all connected <laughs> and it's really not all connected. Um, we're about mm, maybe a hundred miles away from where the big active lava stuff is happening. So I'm safe. No problems. There's a, there's no killer tsunamis coming. There's no nothing. We're all good. Well, I'm, I'm glad of that. Uh, you know, we always think of Hawaii as a paradise, which it is. But then there's also, you know, other things that you got to worry about, which in any place you live, you know, I live in paradise, too. Uh, you know, we got to worry about uh, uh, earthquakes, even though it's been a while since we really had a, a one of note. But, you know, so I guess that's the price of living in paradise, right? Well, I had somebody ask me what happens if the lava takes out the bridge. And I was like, <laughs> what bridge? Apparently, some people think there's bridges in between the islands. So. <laughs> <laughs> there is <That's> great <laughs> no it, it's it's one of my that actually is now one of my favorite questions i think my all-time favorite question though is still when people ask me do they speak english in hawaii oh wow yes yes we <laughs> we all speak english in hawaii um we also all live in houses we don't live in huts or anything so it's very modern here we even have a target everybody it's pretty cool. <laughs> you know you're doing it big when you got a Target. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad that you're doing good. And today we have a returning champ back to the show. This brother, I was uh, fortunate enough to meet. Uh, we both had a film in a uh, film festival. And when I saw his film, I was like, you know, I felt pretty good about the one we had in. And then when I saw his film, I was like, man. Uh, we got to go back to the drawing board. <laughs> it's, it's the one and only Damien D. Smith. What's hey, up, Damien? Everyone. Hey, everyone. How you doing today? Yeah, hey, man. I, I, you know, to this day, man, I, I just love that movie uh, about that. It was, uh, it's just so good and so inventive. And, and uh, you know, if anyone hasn't seen it, they got to definitely check it out. And they can do that on uh, what, iTunes, right? Yeah, about that is available on iTunes uh, for purchase for two dollars and ninety nine cents. So you can you can uh, support some uh, some indie art for two dollars and ninety nine cents on iTunes. You know what I think I might do? I might do a video, like a video of of uh, films by independent filmmakers that, especially that I know, that are available, especially for you know. I wouldn't even say it's a reasonable price. That's like nothing. I mean, people throw away three dollars, you know, at Starbucks. Uh, that's half of what a what they get at Starbucks, right? Just yeah, caramel you know. macchiato. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna think I'm gonna do do something like that because I think there's a lot of films that people need to know that exist that you won't, you're not gonna know unless uh, you're fortunate enough to see a show like this or be at a film festival or just hear, you know, what the if you keep your ear to the ground. And that's definitely one of the good ones about that, for sure. Oh, man, appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. We all, you know, as indie filmmakers and all of us, you know, in the arts need as much um, support and assistance as as, as, it, as we can get for people to, uh, you know, just check out our art, man. And, you know, art and commerce go hand in hand. So, you know, artists have to eat, too. So we really appreciate it. And, you know, we're both, we're both from Los Angeles. And it was funny because both of the films that we, that I had and you had, at the film festival, we shot like at the same location as well. Uh -huh. which was really interesting. So yeah, like Lemur, the Lemur Park area, right? Right, Lemur Park, right. Uh, which was funny as heck because uh, we shot in the bathroom at a uh, uh, near um, Aki Bamboo, which is my favorite Jamaican joint in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, 
I, I remember um, I was on, on the ground with uh, my, my, my partner, Miosha, yeah. and uh, we were shooting un <laughs> underneath the bathroom stall and somebody, a woman walks in and looks at us <laughs> we're in, the, in the girl's bathroom and she looks at us like, what the hell is going on? And we're like, uh, we're shooting a film. And she goes, okay, I'll just go, <laughs> just leave. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> hey man, we gotta, let's give a shout out to those uh to the good people over at Aki Bamboo because they allowed me to shoot and they didn't know me from Adam. Like I had been in there, I patronized the business several times, but that you know, but I didn't really know me to allow me to shoot um to shoot uh their the film there and use their facilities and resources. And I really do appreciate that. Um, they're they're really dope and. Just everybody go out there, and it's great. It's great Jamaican cuisine too. So go down and check it out. When I first when I first moved to LA, you know, I had moved out here from New York, so it was I was you know, looking for the good West Indian food, and that's it. And that that's the place to hit it up. Check it out, y'all. Real talk. Anybody who knows me knows Aki Bamboo is my spot. <laughs> oh man, the short ribs, oh, man, uh -huh. the jerk chick. I mean, everything they got there, and you gonna. This, this turned into a commercial for Rocky Bamboo. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, I, I love that place legit. So well, you know they deserve it, man. Look what they do for you know us indie filmmakers. They they support us. That's what we need. We need support to um you know get the get the message in the movies and 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 the films out to the masses, and they help facilitate that because a location rental fee can be ridiculous. Right. And right. they're they're there for us. Right. It'd be arm, a leg, and a dick. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> definitely. I, I'll give up the arm and a leg, but I don't know about the other piece. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So before we get into the reason why we why we have you here on the show, um, this brother, if you're following this brother on Instagram or Facebook or uh, even Twitter, you know this last year this brother's been traveling. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, I'm like, are you on tour? Because <laughs> this brother was like, I, I, I mean, I'm probably gonna get some of the space, the places. Uh, Mixed up, but I think you were like in Rome or something like that. Yeah, I was. Uh, I I did a lot of traveling because um, one, I was in St. Louis where I'm from. I was there for about, I was there for like three weeks. I was dealing with family things like that. But then I went over to New York. Um, I was in New York for about uh, almost a month because I was also editing a, a documentary that I'm directing called Target St. Louis. I was there uh, working with that, and then I was in and I was in New York living New York life. And then I went over to um, Germany and I was in Germany for a minute. Then I went over to uh, Ireland and Ireland is just, is beautiful, man. I, 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 I went, I had never seen green like that until I went to Ireland and I was all around and seen, I was in castles, man. I went all in these, you know, castles from the 1300s and learn, learning all these stories of these, you know, these uh, Celtic, uh, Celtic, um, you know, clans and how all this happened, you know, learning the difference between black Irish and regular and, and, and Irish folks and the North and the South and all that, all those things, man, it was beautiful. And I went, and Ireland is not that big that I come to find out that I didn't know. So mm -hmm. we, I went from one part of Ireland to another part and I was, stayed in different towns and things like that. And we went over, to, I went over to the Isle of Man, which is a, a country which is south of, which is uh, south of Ireland and south of the United Kingdom. And I was there for a little while and then headed over to uh, the UK. And I was in London with my peoples for a, uh, you know, for a few weeks as well, man. So, you know, I was, I had to, you know, got this some traveling and some. If, if you weren't, if you weren't putting it on social media, I would have thought you was on the run. How you <laughs> was going through this. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, you gotta, you gotta, hey, man, we are global people, man. We are global people now these days, man. Get out, get a passport and go. Mm -hmm. Get a passport and go. Because I mean that's what and that's what the world we got experience. It influences your art, it influences everything, it influences how you interact with people now because you're dealing with different cultures, different lives. I always love to travel. I travel, I, I travel uh, a lot if I if I can. I'll travel much more if, if I wasn't always, you know, going to grind hustling and creating and creating like that, man. But traveling, passports a plus. Yeah, I, I have my passport too, so I plan on using. I just got it last year. Ooh, excuse me, so, something in my eye. But um, and uh, one thing that I I loved about you know I was following your trip, man, uh, because you you did a great job of chronicling it on Thank social you. media, man. And I was like, yeah, I was kind of living vicariously through you, man. Hey, so, yeah, we, that's beautiful. You out. That's beautiful saying that because you know that's one of the reasons I'm not the I'm not the most open person. 
when it comes to uh, especially social media, man. I, I tell you, I'm late to the party. I tell you right, uh, uh, and and I understand that, and I'm okay with it. Uh, but I was hearing things from my uh, family and friends from St. Louis, man. Like, hey, man, you know you job, man. You you know you. I mean, I check out you on Instagram. You make me want to make me run, man. Keep posting, man. Keep posting about your jogging. And I'm all and and I uh, I'm like, oh man, appreciate it. Then I started to talk talking to my cousin, my little cousins and family and friends from back home. And like, oh man, you went over there, man. That's cool, man. I get, I got to see this through you. So I see that there's a service that allowed this is it's a platform that allowed me to take, you know, I can't take everybody with me, but I can show you what's popping. And hopefully it inspires you to say, hey, you know what? Damien have been talking about this passport thing for a minute. Let me go ahead and just grab one and take me a trip, you know. So at least and then, and you know, I, at least I can, you know, say I've been out the country. And once you get out, once you get out the country, and once you travel, it opens you up. You, you, it's like I don't know if you into tattoos or something. You get addicted to it. You want to go see <laughs> see the world, and you want to express and the, and things like that, man. So I I, I, I do it for inspiration as, as as much as I can because I want you know I want us to get our passport. I want us to travel. I want us to be you know citizens of the world as opposed to being just you know landlocked in the U.S. Yeah, that's definitely well said, and and that's something I plan on doing. I, one thing I want to do is I want to make a, a I want to set up a group trip to Kemet. Um, oh. That's that's like my dream place to go. I haven't been yet, and I'd be you know I I really want to do that because you never know the way things are, you know, and they want to close these borders and and whatnot. Yeah. So you, you probably should do it now. And what am I gonna wait for till I'm ninety? So you know, I want to do it now. I can get around and yeah, and, and enjoy it. You know what I mean? So Let's go, brother. I I love to sign up with you. Yeah, yeah. We, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna set it up so that you know, get as many people to go down there and and really just ingest the history and you know, and really go back home. And that's the one place I haven't been yet. And that's my next trip. I got to get over to Africa, man. I got to get to the continent of Africa. I've been having an affinity to. Uh, to get to the Congo for some reason, man. And I, I, I've i never, ever since I was a kid, I said, I want to go to the Congo. And I just never knew, I still don't know exactly why until I get there, I, I think it'll open it up. So I want to get over to the Congo, South Africa, Kenya, uh, Ethiopia. And, uh, you know, just want to travel all around. Just want to take some time. You know, I think after I finish my uh, my feature, I think I'm going to take me a pilgrimage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, it, those are uh, experiences that I, uh, everybody that I know have been, you know, has totally changed their life. And, you know, I want to experience that for myself as well. So oh, nice. Bro. Yeah. Now, um, before we get into, uh, you know, more about you and what you've been working on and such, uh, I remember seeing on Instagram, were you at a Black Panther premiere or was that a screening? I'm not quite sure. No, I went to the, I went to the, uh, I went to the premiere. Oh, that's what's up. And it was, it was Wakanda. Forever, my brother. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> when I say it was beautiful to see that, it was one of the best. I've, I've been fortunate enough to be able to go to you know a nice amount of uh, film premieres, um, and that by far is the best I've been to because the level of excellence and black excellence that was represented in uh, at that place was. I mean, Angela. First off, Angela Bassett was walking around looking like an angel. <laughs> Angela Bassett is in. Is a woman of a certain age, and that woman looks like she's uh, uh, forever 31. Right. <laughs> right. You know what? I have to say about Angela Bassett, she's beautiful on screen, uh -huh. but in person, oh my gosh. Yes, has... man. Yes. TV and movies don't do her justice. No, no, movies do not do Angela Bassett justice at all. Uh, and Lapita don't do her justice either. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't give Lapita. And Lapita, that is a uh, beautiful woman, man. Beautiful oh woman. man, you know she's my she's my little African crush. So <laughs> <laughs> so I, I love nice, nice. I love me some Lapita Nyanga. And uh, in that movie, she was she was awesome as well as Dana Guerrero. Oh uh, yeah, Letitia Letitia uh, who plays the little sister. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful. I mean, the whole the whole experience, man, was amazing. And they had and the and the after party was like you going to, like it's like you were at. The after party was at the um uh, at the um uh, oh man what was it at what's that hotel across the street from uh it was across the street from the movie theater the big one that everyone talks about i can't chinese remember. no not the chinese is where it was the hotel across the street okay the uh the one 
I know what you're talking about. Uh, the, not the W. Uh, not the W. No, not the W. It's. Um, uh, man, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's with an R, I think. The Red Berry, the Roxy. No, no, no. It's the uh, the Roosevelt. Roosevelt, yeah, yeah. The Roosevelt. Um, the Roosevelt was looked like a uh, a, a, it's like a Wakanda royal court. <laughs> when I say it was amazing, everything it was it was black excellence everywhere. It was dripping. It. Black excellence was dripping, dripping all over that place. I love it, man. I love it. And it, was, it was, and it was a tremendous film too. Yes, it was. Yes, yeah, Ryan Coogler did an amazing job. So, yeah, kudos to them. And it's on Blu-ray now. So, yeah, it just came out on Blu-ray, and and I and I hear I'm hearing it's, it's breaking numbers again. It's breaking records again on Blu-ray, and and it was released on iTunes, I think, a, a week earlier. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, everyone started to really uh, uh, it, you know, took to it and was buying it. It was I'm, I'm so happy and proud of, about this film, and I'm so happy it was so good. Yeah, it's so good. Good. he's three for three. Uh, Ryan Coogler. Oh, he's killing it. Yeah, he's killing Ryan, it. Man. Ryan, uh, Ryan, you know, he's killing it, man. Yeah. Ryan Coogler is killing it. Now, last time that you came on indie radio, uh, you had this uh, the project, and I, I'm sorry that the name escapes me. Second, uh, there, there you go. Yeah, um, and and talk about the, uh, the experience now that it's been some time uh, since. You no, know, se second has taken a life of his own, man. Um, it, it was. <laughs> It's an interesting film because it's it it, it focuses on um, a, another way of looking at this po police brutality situation and and how these uh, these these officers are murdering our, our brothers and sisters you know indiscriminately so and it, and it and it took it from a, it it took a, a uh, mental health uh, route I took a mental health route when I was writing it and putting it together uh, because I wanted to first you know like I said before uh, present a third deterrent for with these guys you know you might you might get off uh by public opinion because maybe like for example the community that you live in think hey you did the right thing and mm -hmm. we all know that you know some like-minded individuals you know flock together and then uh then maybe you bring you get off on the court like the you know the, the, the judge or they don't indict you you don't have to go to trial all those things you get off from that but the one thing you cannot escape is yourself you cannot escape you being a human being if you kill someone unjustly um, there's, it's going to leave an imprint on. It's going to leave something on you, and I'm and I wanted to present that aspect of it to show, you know, as another deterrent. Like, you give a, give you a half a second before you pull that trigger. And you think about, am I going to be able to live with this? And that brother might be able to dip left or dip right and get out of the way. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Yeah, man. I'm going to give some options. <laughs> yeah, man. It was very, very powerful work, man. Definitely. Thank you, man. Thank you very much, brother. Now, um. Uh, now, talk a little bit. You kind of briefly mentioned uh, Target St. Louis. Uh, yeah, for so, those who may not know, talk about that a little bit. Sure, man. Target St. Louis is a documentary that I'm directing. It's, um, it's a um, we're in the editing phases now. It's a feature length documentary. Uh, it's focused on a uh, post World War II during the Cold War Cold War era. The military conducted secret chemical testing on poor black people uh, in St. Louis. Uh, it's from the neighborhood in the area and where I'm from. Uh, from my hometown. And um, my um, how I came about this documentary, my grandmother and I communicate with each other through sending mail, sending clippings to each other on occasion. So like, you know, she would send me a, a clipping that was from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch and we'd discuss it or talk about it or something like that. And so she sent me one this time. She was like, you know, I was in this area. Um, it was around the pruitt Igo housing complex areas where, it, where the, uh, the majority of the testing took place for St. Louis. And, um, what happened is that she, I, I lived in this area. And I was like, oh yeah. So I started doing some research, re research and, and doing some preliminary uh, uh, research, and then got in, really got into it. And then it was a, um, it's a, it's a, a Dr. Uh, Taylor, Martino Taylor, Lisa Martino Taylor. She had wrote, she had wrote a thesis statement about this, and you know, exposing a lot of this um, testing, illegal testing done by the government. On poor people in St. Louis, and so I was able to contact her, and we get we was um, me and the team were able to get in there and figure out, you know, not figure out, figure out what actually really happened. And she was a great resource. Uh, Mr. Dr. Taylor is the best. She's really cool, really nice, a really really nice woman, and uh, she was really her, her her findings are public, you know, are published. So we was able to go through those, read those, and then I started, you know, uh, speaking to people who were actually in that area and was actually affected by this chemical testing. And uh, throughout the stages of interview that we deal with, and the sad part for me is that um, not just as our people were affected, and 
it was my family in particular was affected a lot as well because my grandmother is from that area and then i have uncles and, and, and family members that are in the documentary as well that were actually in that area and they, when they suffer from these health defects and these health problems from the testing in this area and, and a funny thing that the testing was doing was going concurrently at the time that the tuskegee experiments were happening as well mm. so they weren't just testing the brothers and from the tuskegee experiment they were testing all around uh they were doing a several testing under the you know the, the board of health and a lot of a lot of a lot of ways they schemed it and and hid it to make it seem like it was something else but this is actually what it was and uh we go in depth in that and we go in depth of the history of st louis uh my hometown and you know i wanted to i had that i'm you know i'm not a documentary i'm a filmmaker right um um but i, I know documentary filmmakers who are like this is their world i'm dabbling in their world because i have a passion for it because it's from my hometown and my my hometown and also my family was affected by this as well. So it, it, I was compelled to you know take my resources, my talent, and fight it and fight against the system, and expose the system. You know, speaking truth to power as much as I can about a, a, a heinous atrocity that happened towards our people. Man, we can't just let these things just ride out like that. Yeah, man, I, and it's so important to get these stories told yeah. because to be honest with you, if we don't tell these stories they'll never see the light of day. So I want to thank you. Yeah, man. Appreciate doing it, man. It, and doing the research too. Yeah, the researching, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And, and the stories are so compelling, man. And it's, and it's been, you know, it's, it can affect you mentally as well because you're thinking, you don't know why you feel this way or you think you're, you're just unlucky or you just think, you know, this cloud of, you know, uh, of, 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 of bad luck and, you know, bad timing has surrounded your family. But a lot of times there are people responsible for this while you can't breathe easily, why you have certain deformities, why certain things happen. It ain't, it ain't because you have been, you know, I'm a, I'm a believer in God. You have been, you know, um, you've been, you know, looked unfavorably by God or, or God's giving you these tests to go through and things like that. Sometimes these are man-made issues and we need to expose that because, you know, uh, the more we know, the more information that's out there, then we're able to, you know, um, make sure if one, it doesn't happen again. And then secondly, protect children. That's right. Uh, the people who can right. fight for themselves. So we got to be there for our people. That's right. Uh, Jen, are you there? I am. Okay, I sent you something on Facebook Messenger. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, I had to. But, uh, can you, know, you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, just check your Facebook Messenger. Um, you know, with another thing too that uh, people don't understand is that these things uh, actually affect generations mm -hmm. of yes. people. Like, you know, they think, because they you always hear, oh, that was so long ago, but they don't understand that the effects of this stuff travels from generation to generation. Can you speak a little bit on that? Yes, it does. Yes, it does, brother. Um, you know, and they use, like, it was cadmium, white phosphorus, and we all know that cadmium is a cancer-causing agent. And 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 that stuff and some things can go down. You you just know you know everything's can get into your DNA. It's a lot of stuff that uh, really uh, could affect uh, people and also their offsprings and everything, man. And and it's and mentally. And who knows? You know, it might it might. St. Louis is a very my hometown. I love it. I love the people there. Really good people there. But there's a lot of uh, poverty and there's a lot of you know, there's not a lot of. Uh, 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 opportunity when it comes to like jobs and things to do, and it's a it was a very violent place. Uh, St. Louis is, mm -hmm. and um, and this might you know who knows that who who can say for sure that this may not have something to do with, it. right? And, you know, but the, and, and 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 the government just left and just left you to your own devices. That yeah, we did these tests and just kept we gonna keep it moving and no follow up. No, you know, let me make sure these people were okay. And then they and they and they tested people without their knowledge. Right. And and it's, here's here's a here's a real quick fact about them. They also did other testing, but they informed that city that they were testing because that city and that area, what they were doing was predominantly uh Caucasian. Mm -hmm. So they they informed them and let them know, and that city, you will have to look check out the documentary to you know uh find out that city was able to revolt. They broke the apparatuses. They kicked. They literally kicked them out by throwing rocks at the trucks and kicking these people out. Because you know, as a kid, when you when you used to have a uh, 
we used to ride around in the uh you see those uh trucks spraying for mosquitoes and things like that. I, mm. I guess we had them in St. Louis. Right. But you know, you like, oh they 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 spraying you know pesticides. So uh but that's what they were doing with that's what they were doing in St. Louis. They would come around with trucks and station wagons that you think they're spraying for pesticides, so your kids out there playing and all this, but what they're really doing is doing chemical military testing. Mm. And uh and then, but the people of the other city just kicked them out. But we did it, so they and they learned from that, and they wanted to make sure that they didn't tell the people of St. Louis, except for a few, a few companies and organizations, which you'll find out more in uh, Target St. Louis. When do you think we'll be able to uh, get a chance? To well, I'm working to have it done. We're in the editing process right now. Uh, we had we caught up with a few uh, snafus uh, with a certain things that um, that were just that's at this point just irritants. But uh, we're working to have something for you, June, July. Oh, that's true. Yeah, July. Yeah, June, July, August. Yeah, this summer, you, you will be sad. We'll be having the screening this summer, uh, starting in St. Louis and then going all around. All right, man. I I can't wait to see it, man. Oh uh, man, you're uh, the first one I send it to, brother. You've been you you supported every project that I've been a part of and uh, I've done, and I and I really appreciate you and 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 the entire uh your entire system, man. I really appreciate you guys very much. Now, that's a big have... story. That's Thank a, you. That's a huge story. Thank you very much. And um, are, are you, my grandmama, my grandmama is the one who was a catalyst of this all. Yeah, and she, I, I, Sarah Modella Bones, that's my lady. Do, do you plan on uh, doing the screening here in Los Angeles? Yeah, I will. I definitely will. Oh, that's great, man. I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm, I really am because uh, w one is I, you know, I'm a big history buff, and and I, it's so important for these stories to be told, and I'm just very excited about it, man. You you got you had me the minute. You uh, first told me about it, so I'm oh, thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, so be before we, we go on to uh, the your latest project, I want to ask you about uh, uh, now you're a filmmaker, you're a writer, uh -huh. you do a lot of things, but you're also an actor. Yes, I am. And uh, so how's uh, so what's going on on the acting front? Oh man, thank you for asking, brother. Um. Well, I went I went down to South by Southwest this uh, the previous uh, this year South by Southwest because uh, it's a movie that I'm a part of that I'm in called Jen. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's a coming of age story about a young lady um, who's having ident identity uh, with her sexuality and also with her religion. Her mother actually uh, converts to Islam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so it's a story about a, a young lady who has to convert to Islam because her mother does and growing pains within that and it's it's a it's a great story uh i really enjoyed it i played daoud uh the father of the young lady's love interest oh okay yeah and it's um and we have in the story um i'm so sorry i just got caught up on something my apologies um it's it's storing one more because i want to make sure i got everyone's name uh properly uh said it's throwing it's throwing simone messick uh, Mystic, I'm sorry, Simone Mystic, which you know her for as Misty Knight, uh, in in um, in in Luke Cage, yeah. uh, Zoe Renee, who's on the choir, who's excellent, Hashim, um, he's the brother on the blacklist, uh, Dorian uh, Dorian Messick, Simone's husband, and also a phenomenal actor, Kevin Hal Kevin Kelvin Harris Jr., who's in everything in Sundance this year. And last but not least, well, uh, uh, last but not least, my wife in the film is Kelly Jenrette, who's who's phenomenal always. And uh, it's several several other standout talents as well. More, uh, Maya Morales, uh, it's, it's, you know, a lot of folks, man. We love, we love it. And we're happy to be a part of it. So we, so it, 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 um, it premiered in South by Southwest and it ended up uh, winning best screenplay Best writer, best screenplay, and now we're uh, we will be an American Black Film Film Festival this year. It'll be an ABFF, so right. we'll be down at ABFF. So I will be down in ABFF. All right, that's what's up, man. So it's, it's, a, it's a really good story. It's a powerful story. It's um, it's it's it's, it was, it's I mean, I can say it's really dope. I got to give it to Nigel. Nigel Munn uh, is the um, is a director writer. Um, this this was this was her first feature. Oh, wow. and it's she she's deserves all the accolades that she's receiving for it. It's a very beautiful poetic film. Yeah. Uh, our DP Bruce Cole. Bruce has done all type of uh, great things, and he's a storyteller. Uh, just check it. You know, I can't wait till you guys get a chance to check it out when it hits the, when it hits either 
uh, the big screen or or Netflix. That's what I'm assuming is going to go. I'm pretty. They 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 more they know more of the details than I do. But it's a it's a good film. I can't wait to check it out. No. Now, uh, let me ask you a little bit about your vanity, because you, you're you're a, a young brother, right? Yeah. And now, as an actor, um, you're playing a dad. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, so how do you feel about that? You know, now being you know the, from the leading man to you know pops. Man, you know, you know what it was. I'm. I, I've never had any ambitions of being a uh, uh, a quote unquote leading man. I, I I I thought they were cool, you know. You'd always want to save the girl and you know get the beautiful, have the beautiful co-host. But I I always looked at myself, and I would continue to look at myself as a character actor. Mm -hmm. And I I because I, I was inspired by you know uh, you know cats like Don Cheadle and uh, and pro, and I like Sam Rockwell and and, and um, uh, Giovanni Ribisi right. and and uh, uh, um, who else? it's all these great character actors, uh, Jeff Goldblum. These were the people who I saw when I when I when I was inspired to be uh, to tackle acting and be a, be a performer when I was going and doing these theaters. Those were the guys who inspired me because they looked like they were having fun. Right. Like John Leguizamo was one of one of you know a, a great inspiration to me. Like he was having fun doing what he wanted to do and what he did. Uh, you know, uh, Paul Giamatti. He's a character actor, but he but he comes over and be a leading man or he be uh, you know he's number one on the call sheet. On occasions, but he's he's essentially a character actor. And those are the ones I feel had the, you know, the best time. So that was a uh, you know. So I that that for me was not a, it was ever a transition. But also it did kind of. I was like, uh, do I you know? He is a, uh, uh, pops. You know what? I read the script. I really enjoyed it. I really liked the director because she was uh, it was a sister, a young Muslim sister who was really wanting to show uh, show a side of Islam that is not. You know, regularly portrayed in in uh, today's uh, media and definitely in film a lot of times. So I wanted to be a part of something like that. So that's what made me, you know, say, "Hey, you know what? It is what it is." You know, I want to I want to go for it, and I, I went for it. I grew my beard out. Luckily, luckily, you know, genetics kicked in. Maybe from some of this, some of that testing. I was talking about the talk in St. Louis. I have this gray patch, oh yeah, you know, right here that grows with my beard. You know ever since I was growing a beard, you know, really. So that's when it grows out like it did. And for the film, it, it ages me a little older if you want to play it that way. So it helps out, you know, so. Yeah. That was the thing. I, I didn't think about that. I feel you, I thought about it for a second, but <laughs> luckily character acting is my, is the forte that I want to go into. Like, you remember when Mouse came into Devil in the Blue Dress? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, he I stole the film. He stole, you know, yeah. you remember when uh, we, 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 we had uh, uh, Jeffrey Wright, in Shaft, oh yeah, he's, he's that's fun, killing. man. You guys were having fun. John Leguizamo in Spawn, yep. These mm -hmm. these guys were having Jeff Goldblum in the Big Chill, you mm -hmm. know, ensemble character actors, you know, because I always knew that I had a, I, I wanted to, I, I love performing, I love stage, I love, you know, uh, I love that, but I also knew that I'm an artist. I, I, I was an artist and directing was also always in my future. So when I was going through my conservatory and theater in New York and all that is always had a idea that I want to do both. I was transitioning my artistry to this as well. So it, it worked out perfectly for me. I, I'll tell you though about the, the gray in the beard. I remember the first time I noticed it, I thought I had lint in my beard. So I was just like, <laughs> and it wasn't coming out. I was like, oh, oh, oh <laughs> that's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was definitely an eye opener. <laughs> you know? uh, I, I understand, bro. I definitely. Yeah, understand. But you know, it is what it is. So it's all good. Mm -hmm. It's all good. So let's talk about your latest project that we want people to get out and vote for. Yes. Uh, for those who may not know, tell us about the project and tell us about uh, what you the call to action that we want today. Oh man, okay. So the latest project is Daddy's Big Girl. It's a uh, story that's about a young um, about a father. Uh, preparing his daughter for him not to be around like she's used to seeing him. It was written by Latham Ford. Um, and this is the first project that I did not write that I'm directing. So I want, and that was a challenge that I wanted to take take on. And, and, and Latham and I said, and uh, after he, he sent, he sent, he, uh, sent me the script, uh, it's funny how, how it even came about because Latham is also a neighbor and um, we used to play, and we used to see each other at the gym playing ball and everything. And he had seen my, uh, he had seen 
previous projects. And he was like, man, I really like, you know, we like to tell stories and how, you know, I got this thing I wrote, man, um, I feel it, I'm, you know, I, I feel it. Just tell me what you think. And I, um, I checked it out. I was like, hey man, I like this. You know, it's, 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 it's portraying us in a manner that, you know, again, I try to fight against the, uh, the imagery that, the, the weaponized imagery that's you know, that put out against African-American men. So that's, was a, that check, that was a box that was checked for me. And then I was like, I, I like the heart of this story and let's play with it and make something happen with it. And we went into it and, um, you know, I directed it and his brother starred in it and we just made it to what it was. It was, it was, a, it was a journey. It was some, it was some work, but we made it happen, man. And I'm really happy about it. I'm really happy about it, man. Really. Happy. Before we get into the particulars about it, um, it's funny that, you know, it's your neighbor, right? Uh -huh. And a lot of times, you know, whether it be a neighbor or a friend or something, uh -huh. they always got an idea. Yes. And it's never that you really want to do. You know, it's like, it's like, oh man, hey, I know you be making movies, right? Yeah. Idea. And and then you're just listening to the idea, even though you don't want to. Yeah. And it's always like a hundred million dollar budget. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. ain't gonna, they ain't gonna help you get the money for it. No, no, no. Know, so. Turn on over, man. Hey, Mr. Brandon, here we go, man. Take that around with it. It's dope though. Give me all, <laughs> matter of fact, give me all the credit too. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, but yeah, man, I, I'm happy it wasn't that. And Latham, you know, he 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 told me about it. He was like, I seen his enthusiasm about it mm -hmm. at the beginning. That's what made me go, huh? All right, let me check it out. And I was like, okay, this is um it, it had the heart. And, and and that's what I and that's what I felt. I felt I felt the heart in it. And he told me what inspired him to write it. So I was like, oh wow, okay, okay. All right, so yeah, let, let, let's play with it because it just aligned with everything that I was about. And I had some ideas on how I wanted to tell this particular story. And um, and it was, and it was, you know, it, it came across, I, I, I believe, you know, well. So I would not. Now, it's funny that you broke, you broke one of the, the rules they say you're not supposed to do. What's that? But it worked out so beautifully in oh. the film, working with kids, right? Yeah, man. But this little girl is so adorable and you know what She's amazing you know what's so funny about me is mm. i i don't normally like adorable kids <laughs> adorable kids get on my i i'm so weird adorable kids like in movies sometimes uh. grate my nerves right uh. but this little <laughs> this i i don't know what it is i just don't like you know the little you know it's like i don't know it just seems overkill but uh. this this young lady that you have in this in this film is yeah. so good and uh, I really enjoyed watching her, and I loved watching uh, Latham and the young lady, uh, Jasmine. Uh, Jasmine, uh, act with Jasmine. And everyone came together uh, seamlessly, man. Everyone mm -hmm. came together seamlessly. Everyone uh, <laughs> did exactly what they were supposed to do, and took care of everything. They did exact. They did exactly what they were supposed to do, supposed to do, and they all really just it just flowed. It was very organic, and that's what I liked about it. It was nothing that. I, that was seen forced. It was nothing that I, you know, it wasn't a struggle. Uh, we got there. Coy, Coy knew her lines very. Coy mm. was three, three years old when we shot this. Wow. I, wow. And I was like, "Yo, this is crazy." And we only had one real rehearsal. The rest of the time, she was, um, she was with her mother, and, and her mother was like, "Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready for a debut." You know, and I'm like, "Okay, you know," and I had already foreseen some issues going to have to happen. I'm like, "Okay, it's a three year old we got to deal with. Come on, now, it's a three year old." But when I got there, and we was, uh, when I got there for on the production day, she was so you know tight and knew her stuff and so up for the challenge. I was, I was just, I was impressed and amazed by her. She has a bright, bright future uh, coming up soon, I, and I'm looking to work with her again. Um, yeah, because she, she delivered, she delivered on the adorable, she delivered on, on lines and she, and, and she was just a natural. It didn't, it was all, it was, it was set perfectly, man. She, she's the heart and the driving force of the film. And I, and I, and I, and I applaud, and I applaud Corey and I can't wait to get a chance to play with her again. Mm -hmm. now, you know, you, I, oh, ahead, I, I just, I just got to interject something and say, <clears throat> like, you know, I've got three kids of my own. Okay. And I have seen them do everything from school plays to out here in Hawaii, we have something called May Day. 
they've had speaking lines. They've had my son plays guitar uh-huh. and it is really hard to get your kids to, uh, to act isn't even the right word. It is hard to get your kids, even when they are well prepared to be super authentic because once the pressure is on, yeah. it, that's a t- that's a tough role. And this little girl, she is so <clears throat> authentic. There's there's no there's a seamlessness from what you know is supposed to be happening uh, story wise, and and what she is putting out there, and there there is no line in between it. It's just perfect. She, yeah, she is awesome. She is awesome, and you know, and we we I know when we got to when when, when we were on. Um, on set, you know, I really had to, you know, we had to work, you know, it was a work. Cause again, she is three, you know? So it was, it took some time, but when she and I locked, locked in and we were, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta finesse away with a three year old and you gotta be able to keep it. You have to keep it play. You gotta keep it happy because they don't do anything they don't want to do. Uh, so you gotta keep it a certain type of way and a certain type of way of managing, a uh, managing Koi. Um, but it, it was, it was it was it was a process, but it was a good process, and I was happy to be doing it because I see the I see the potential in her, and um and I see nothing but great things for the future for for Corey and I'm and she she was a, she's a beast man she's a really she's a beast, and you know we and her mother gets all the credit you know in my opinion her mother her mother was there she was on set with us we had to you know even when delivering some of the lines you know when when Corey would. You know, uh, veer off a little bit. She helped bring her back in, and we had, we would take time and hey, let's just, let's just play. Me and Corey, I'd be on the ground with her, just playing around and just and then just having a conversation with her to get her to get her right where she needs to be. And then I just slide myself out, and then lay them a slide right on in, and we'll get it, we'll get it we'll get it going. You know, whenever we came to a hiccup or we came to a, a point where we could see that she was getting a little agitated, uh, we just you know just stopped it and just worked and worked. And work the play of it. They work the uh, the enjoyment of it, and then she was ready to go again. So it's it's, it's a it's a strategy with working with kids. Luckily, I have a lot of experience working with kids. I I used to teach theater to kids at uh, after school programs at at at, uh, at risk. You know those at risk schools that they call it. You know uh, in, in at risk neighborhoods they like to label. Um, so I, used to, I I worked with all you know kids from second second grade all the way to you know ninth grade. And so, nice. and so it's in New York and and here, so yeah, that helped out. That did. What'd, you, what'd you find? What'd you find her? What'd you say? Where'd you find her? Look, like I said, seamlessly. Latham had Coy already. Oh, yeah. Wow. Latham, okay. had, Latham had Coy already. He said, he said, I have this little girl, man. She's adorable. You're gonna love her. You know, I'm like, okay, all right. You know, he said, he, and I'm like, and I went. I'm like, oh yeah, you're a hundred percent right, Latham. Yeah, so. <laughs> And kudos to Latham. Uh, his performance was amazing. Uh, you know, a great performance. You felt the heart mm-hmm. in in the performance, and they had great chemistry. For a minute, I was like, "Is that his kid?" No, you know, like, but no. That makes it even better that you know they they develop chemistry on the set. That's awesome. Well, no, well, they knew each other because uh, you know. At first off, Coy lives the Huxable lifestyle. Mom, daughter, mom, with mom a lawyer, daddy a doctor. Oh wow. You know, <laughs> Yeah, she lives the Huxley lifestyle. You know, she's uh, and I, and I Latham is a close friend uh, of the family, and he was like, "Yo, man, I'm telling you, I, she's going to be dope." And I and he was 100 percent correct. Wow, that's great. And he was great, and then uh, the yeah. mother, the mother was great too. And it, uh, tell us about her. Jasmine has such a uh, a simplistic beauty to her performance that I really appreciate. Um, she came in as a professional that she is, and. And and just delivered everything that we needed. Um, what we didn't have, like, I think we had maybe a possibly a rehearsal, but I don't think if I can remember correctly, I don't know if it was even that. And she came in, and it, the, I wanted a certain tone for her, because I mean, I, without you know giving her, giving away, I wanted a certain tone for for Jasmine uh, for her character, and she provided that you know beautifully, and 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 it was just very present. In her performance, and it just really, it really, it really made me feel good. And I got an added bonus: uh, Jasmine has tattoos of the indinkra symbols on her. I noticed that. 
Yeah, and that was I. Well, because I'm in, in all my projects. If you, I don't know, it's I. I, I kind of promote like natural hair on certain things, you know. Uh, so like a, like about that, everyone in it was natural hair. Had natural hair, and she came in with this big booming afro. I was like, oh yeah, baby. that's what I'm talking about. And she can't. And 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 then when I saw the Dinkra tattoos, I was like, oh wow, look at this. Everything, the universe. Uh, was in alignment, and that just lets you know you're going the right way. The things line up so seamlessly like that. Yeah, she's a very beautiful uh, young lady. Yes, she is. As well as, uh, yeah. Talented as well. So, you know, because you know, you know how it is. Sometimes they, the beautiful will outshine the talent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll be like, she fine, but she can't act. You know, oh, but not in that case. So that was good. <laughs> so yeah. that was good, man. She's a total package. So l- let me ask you a little bit about your your directing style, like. Uh-huh. Um, as an actor, uh, I imagine that you use some of your experiences as an actor, as a director, to, yeah. to get the performance this that you need oh, to yeah. get. Talk yeah. a little bit about that. How you? Oh man, that that uh, me being an actor is one of the um, biggest benefits I believe that helped me out in my directing because, uh, as you know, say, as an actor, I know what it it takes to get to a performance. Like, for example, there I know I have I have a lot of friends that are directors as well. Um, and a lot of them go and take acting classes at some of these some of the some of the biggest workshops and acting and training schools out here because they want to be able to know how to communicate with actors uh better and more fi- uh effective uh effectively and they want to see, you know, to get into what it really takes in the preparation that it takes to get into these characters and how and what it and, and how to sustain these characters because you know it's a process in filming and to stay and live in something and live with a person and, and get, live inside somebody's head or someone live inside your head that's a process man that's why you know everybody can't do it you know um so they have to go and try to you know seek that knowledge out where for me I this is my training you know, I, I come from that. So I'm able to have a shorthand when it comes to like talking to the actors and talking to uh, I would, and talking to the actors and talk about their intentions and their performances. And I can speak to them on a level that we are eye to eye. It's not like from this guy telling you what to do. It's like, here's another, here's another, here's another performer who knows what it takes and knows the sacrifice and the time and the dedication and the love for it that you have to have. And, and, and also, already as a director knowing where i want you to be and be, and, it's, and it helps me effectively communicate you getting to that place so that helps me out tremendously being a being a, being an actor uh for example like in about that what i what i um that's the only one that i was actually uh i started i was actually in and directed what it gave me it gave me a perspective that i don't think a lot of directors get cuz me being actually in the scene Instead of me being behind the monitor, I'm in a scene. I'm perform. I, I know my performance, but I also know exactly what I want. What what I want to be feeling while I'm in the scene. And if I'm not feeling it, I'm saying, you know what? I mean, it's, it, let's try another take. And here are some other intentions. And here are, here's another direction for you to go. And because and then also because also uh, the thing we're acting, we don't know sometimes what the other pieces are. You know, this happening. Like this light is coming in this way for a reason. I'm hitting you harsh like this because there's a sentiment, a, a, uh, there's a value of, and, and there's a sentiment that I'm trying to put across by setting the light out like this. So if you can get in pocket with that, we all can, it, it'll push everything. So I'm able to be in it and also express to people, you know, express to them, you know, th- let's let's try this out. It's a reason I promise you, and I'm able to communicate with you, communicate with acts a little more effectively uh, because I'm a because I'm a performer as well. To show this is what I'm trying to say, and this is what I want, and this is the reason you're doing this. Because it might not make sense to you, or you might want to try something else. You definitely can try it because I believe in creativity, but also I need this because it falls in line with the bigger picture. Because actors are really consumed about what their role is in a project, which is rightfully so. But there's a whole lot of moving pieces when it comes to uh, perform uh, a film that. You know, uh, I'm able to. I think it helps me communicate a little better. That's, you know, you know, one thing that I, I love about your work is that um, that you do a great job of of making people look good as a director. 
like um, I remember in about that as well as um, your other films is uh, you do a great job with the lighting and with the way that the people are filmed and you bring out their beauty and also the beauty in the performances as well. And uh, your visual style is really excellent. I, I was, that was one of the things that really caught my eye when I, when I saw your work on, on the big screen as well as the work since then. It seems like you put a lot I put a lot into the visual style of what you're shooting. Uh, talk about talk about like some of your process as far as uh, when you're about to shoot, as far as what you're trying to accomplish with the camera and you know and, and uh, that that sort of thing. You know what? It comes with uh, I, I, especially when I'm let's say sort of sort of last three of uh, my stories are usually a, have a component of us meaning. Uh, African Americans, or just you know, uh, people in a, of the African diaspora. So I, I really want to, I really want us to be represented on screen. We, we, it's, it's so much. We have to fight against so many negative imageries and and so many weaponized uh, visuals um, on on so many different levels because they're constantly you know uh, projecting a a stereotypical view of us and some and and, and we have to be we have to be. Um, our eyes got to be open to it because it's it's sometimes it's subliminal. It's like it's the positioning of a man. If they say two men standing, and one guy might be shorter than the other guy, but this somehow this guy's taller and this guy's shorter. But and and aesthetically, you might not pay attention to it. You might not even thinking about it's anything, but it's constantly you know uh, re uh, reiterating a level of subordinate or a level of someone that is not. You know, and I and I like to combat it against um, combat that as much as possible in my visuals. So I stay, I, I work towards that, and 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 I want and, and I want our quality to be at a certain level at Excellent. all times. And it, it's not just me. I uh, when it, when it comes to that, I have a great DPs. My main the DP I use normally is Noel Maitland, really dope, uh, really dope DP, uh, a, a advocate. One of our advocates, you know, the brother's a beast, though. He's a beast. And Noel and I have done two films together, and we're going to do several more together. But for Daddy's Big Girl, it was a sister named Crystal Kelly, because I think it was important to have the sensitivity of a, um, I want to, I want, I really wanted a, a, a woman filmmaker uh, to be a part of this. And the sensitivity, and I knew what the story was, and I knew what I wanted to put across. And I, I and, and also, I was working with a three-year-old, right? And and you know you you are a lot more comfortable with people who look like you, right? You know, and I knew I had to have that around there because a lot of things to send a three-year-old off, like you know, there's a lot of things that could happen. So I wanted to make sure that that was represented as well. And we we sit down and we talk about our intentions in every scene. That shouldn't be a that shouldn't be a frame that's gratuitous. Right. Every frame matters, and every frame should tell a story. So that's why I, that's that's the school of thought that I come from when I'm directing. I want uh, if you're seeing something, it's intentional, it's not arbitrary, and it's and it and and and, it, and it's and it's there to push the story forward. I'm here telling you something by looking at this, and and hopefully you can go and hopefully you can go back and watch it again. And be like, oh, I've got a new interpretation of it. That's what art is. Art is really an interpretation. Of what the artist is putting out, wow. and uh, you know, so if you go back and watch some of the greats, like Dog Day Afternoon, Serpico, Al Pacino, the City of God, you know, uh, you know, a lot of foreign films are really good at doing that. You know, uh, you know, American films are are are, are, are as, as, as well. But I just wanted to, I really want our aesthetics and our beautiful, our, our, our aesthetics to be beautiful, or 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 whatever the intentions are. If your intentions are to be grainy and 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 violent or uncomfortable. I want it to be that, but nothing is nothing is done without an intention behind. It. You, you, know, you know what's so funny? Uh, the th the young lady who's three years old. Uh, uh, what's, her name? what's her name again? Koi. Koi. Yeah. When I see a young lady like that, or just any kid who can deliver such a great performance at like three years old, it uh -huh. makes me go, "Dang, I must have been slow," because I really <laughs> doubt. At three years old, I think I was just picking boogers or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I don't think I was that 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 genius at three to, to pull off anything remotely <laughs> like that. Hey man, it's these indigo kids, man. It's these indigo kids, man. My, I got I got a niece, man. She uh she's about to be 
she's working on being two, man. She can grab my phone and pull up her games and do all this stuff. She can, I mean, they, they're advancing. They're advancing. Mm-hmm. And that's what society is. This culture is. They're advancing. It's just what it is. I'm happy. I'm happy to see it. I found a, um, a report card. <laughs> when I was when I was like five or something, uh-huh. and I was reading it. I, at first, it was one of those things where it was like, "Oh, this is cool," uh-huh. and then I started reading it, and it was saying it, it gave me a low score on coordination. I was like, "Dang, what was I? Was I two left feet?" You know, like I, I started getting mad <laughs> when I was reading it. Coordination. I, yeah, I was like, I was like, I want to recount. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, yeah, I posted it on Facebook. I'm gonna have to repost that. Oh, I want to check it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it like it broke down. Like, oh my! It said I got an A in, in sleeping. Huh. <laughs> you did that like, time really well, huh? Yeah, I, I I ate and and slept pretty well. So I did. I got I knocked those out the park. But uh, oh, yeah. So, but kudos, like I said, kudos to you. Oh, man, thank you, man. We gotta yeah, look man. good, man. We gotta look good. It's just just what it is. So let's talk about hey. the call. Oh, go ahead, Jen. And then I, I, I was just gonna say, Damien, did did you uh, did you use any um, from a technical standpoint? Right. First, I want to say I really like the way that this thing is edited. There's a a nice flow to it. It it does not feel choppy. It feels really organic like people are actually moving in exactly the way that they're supposed to between where the shots kind of come together but uh, did you use any kind of um special filters on any of those shots you know what um it wasn't such special filters i think we shout i was it i think we just used a gh4 or you know but you know what i gotta give praise to our editor alan sawaley that brother was our editor, and you might know him. Um, he does the Front Seat Chronicles, who is also a social conscious like series about you know things that happen in front of a uh, in the front seat of a car. So Alan is used to editing f- things that are you know in one location or so or, or minimum locations, and he really he really um, well, him and I sat down and we you know it was so many different options because again Coy is three, so she was improving a lot of stuff that. You know, she she couldn't she wouldn't recreate. She just moved on to the next improv or the next thing, and when it gets to that's when it becomes more of a challenge in editing. So um, so we that was a real challenge. So that's kind of that's what took you know uh, uh, longer in the editing process for something that is I mean essentially like around eight minutes, eight or nine minutes. So it, it took that it took it took longer because of that. But it succeeded, uh, in my opinion, because of that, you know. But it, you know, we had to match and things. So Alan was Alan was a beast on on that, and he he him him and I thugged it out. Alan lives way out, so I would have to take these journeys and um, you know go up to Calabasas and we sit down and chop it up for hours and you know talk about what we want to tell and how we want to tell the story. And we I, I sit there and we I sat there and edited with him, you know, the entire process, and he was. He's a great editor. Alan, yeah, Alan Swirly, man. Check, check, check that brother out. Nice. And, yeah. So yeah, it, that's and I and thank you very much for that compliment. And, and for oh, those who don't know, uh, LA to Calabasas is a good trip. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna give you one more compliment too, then, because the the specific reason I asked about the filters is because there is a a, a noticeable without giving anything away, yeah, really I know nice about. noticeable light change. In uh-huh. between certain scenes, and yeah. and it it puts you in exactly the right mood that you need to be in in order to sort of understand what's going on. So that's mm-hmm. one more really nice level. It's a, it's a beautiful layer. Good uh, job. Thank you, thank you, and I, and also, I mean, I really appreciate the compliment, and I want to say thank you for uh, on behalf of our DP as well, Crystal, Crystal. Chris, who came in, and we said, Crystal and I took a bottle of Jack Daniels. And, well, I took a bottle of Jack Daniels. And, uh, <laughs> and we shot and listed this out all the way. And we, because we knew what we wanted to show and we knew what we wanted to portray. And, and even when it comes down to the feel and how the lighting should and should not hit, you know, and what we wanted to do. And also that thing that you're talking about. We, uh, we, we intentionally wanted to make sure that that came across because also, you know, like I say, every story, every frame is a story being told. So the lighting is telling the story of in a situation. You know, when it's getting dark, it's nighttime. It's getting you know, night is coming. Vampires about to come out. You know, yeah. oh, 
we got to race the sun. You know, everything has an intention to. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't it good, though, when you collaborate with people and you guys are in the kind of the same headspace, like where you guys kind of see the project kind of similarly? And it makes I just think that when you collaborate with people that that get what you're trying to do with it and have the same kind of goal, uh, it just makes the process so much better. So much better. There's so much like we work with like minded individuals. Mm -hmm. That's there's no uh film is such a collaborative sport and it's and and it's an uphill battle. You don't want to be in a battle an uphill battle in a collaborative sport with someone who's that you gotta combat with on a you know in a, on an unhealthy manner, man. So you just you gotta collaborate with cool folks and and, and, it, and, it, and it works so well when you got people who you and you get them. I've seen the independent films where they did a Kevin Spacey, where they did they shot the gang near the whole movie, and the person was just so rec reckless, they just went in and said, "You know what? We're gonna reshoot all them scenes again." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Don't so don't get, yeah. don't get Kevin Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> That's they, their homies are like, hey, I thought you was in that movie. You're like, oh, well, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So, you know, yeah. I, I'm always joking that that's the, and, and no, I am. I shouldn't say I'm joking. I don't joke. I'm, I'm actually serious, but it makes people laugh. That That's why I sit all the way through the credits at every uh, single movie, because somebody put love and time and effort and energy and something of themselves into this, and if the very least that you can do is sit there and wait for those names to roll by on those credits. It, it yeah. It's an act of love. I mean, there is something sheerly powerful about bringing art mm -hmm. into life. And whew, yeah, it's, it, but, and, and like you said, you can tell when things collaboratively work together, yeah. it feels like it comes it together. Feels, it, it just, it's. Yes, you're hundred percent right. And also what helps with that situation you got to have a producer who's there for you as well, you know, because yeah, you you especially the day of you're focusing on so many different things, performances, little kid running around. You got all these different elements that's rolling. You need a producer there who's going to help drive the day and make it happen. And I, and, and I had a, and I had a great producer with my producing partner, uh, Risha Archibald. She's always she's always there and making making it happen when it came to like, especially with Daddy's Big Girl. She was on she's on the ground and releases making sure this person does this this person's happy because producer's job is to make sure that the artists have everything that they need to do to be the, the most effective that they can and uh i gotta give i gotta give her kudos for that because you know it's, it's it's a collaborative sport and you need your teammates that's right so this part is very important in this uh episode is because we really want this to be a call to action yes now yeah. for those who may not know please break down what i mean and how they can help support this film. Okay, so here's the thing. Daddy's Big Girl was selected by uh, to be a national finalist in the Gentleman Jack Real to Real National Short Film Competition. What that means is that um, everybody, you know, out of all the submissions of all around the United States, uh, Jack Daniels does this, does this uh, film competition for, uh, for inclusion and also uh, stories that might not have been told in the mainstream every year and um it, they choose five six films out of um uh, out of this process i mean uh, six films out of all the submissions uh that they feel that are stand out or need to get some attention and they uh they they put them in a running against each other uh to see who's going to be the one film to win um and you know the majority of the voting the voting is going to happen by line or you know vote not the voting the the the, the choice the majority of the choice is going to fall with upon the team of, over at Jack Daniels and also their partners, which is Lionsgate and Cold Black Entertainment. But for uh, but there also is another element, which is an online voting element of this, that's going to represent a percentage of you know the vote as well. And and we would like and we and, and we uh, appeal to everyone who's listening and watching to vote uh, for Daddy's Big Girl. Um, the link. Uh, the link where you can go and vote is on all my social media at this present moment. And also, I'm pretty sure the good brother can say is going to post the link up as well, where you can click on the link and it, and it shows you all the films. And all you also, you can watch Daddy's Big Girl from this link, from that. And then um, just go down and 
and click and vote for Daddy's Big Girl. Again, vote for Daddy's Big Girl. The other films, are I, I, I enjoy them, but vote for Daddy's Big Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the other ones are good, but like he said, vote for Daddy's Big Girl. That's it's very important. So what I'm going to do is tonight I'm going to make a post uh, on on all my uh, you know Facebook, Instagram, all of that good stuff, as well as in the show notes for this show, I'm going to include the link directly to the video as well as the link to voting. And uh, we're going to try to get as many people to go ahead and vote. Now, how until how long do they have until they can vote? Thank you for bringing it up because I almost forgot. We have now, I think it's five more days. Oh, okay. Yeah, All five right. more days, five or four more days to vote. So, and you can also, you can vote every day. So if you like it, if you like Daddy Big, Big Girls, I applaud, I, 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 I beg of you to vote twice, just on the strength. Yes, you know, you can vote, you can vote every day if you would like to, uh, on all your devices too, if you would like. Um, you know, because I think it go through the IP address, but check it out. If you really like the film that much, vote for it as many times as you as you like. Um, uh, yeah, so it's, it's but it's a countdown, it's a short, it's a short window of time that they gave you, they gave us to uh get to get the word out to have our people vote for it. And I think they only give you one week. To have your people come and vote for it. So time is of the essence. And um, I want you guys to go and check out the film. And if you like it, check out, you know, vote for Daddy's Big Girl. Yeah, and and, and I you would have to be dead or in a coma or just or just uh I don't know, dim witted if you didn't like this film. It's a great film. Oh man. And I'm Thank sure you. that people will enjoy it and make sure you vote. Get out there and vote. Uh mm -hmm. you'll feel much better than uh no, nah, let me stop. I was gonna say you yes, <laughs> but uh, uh -huh. but uh, no, but no, make sure you guys vote. And uh also we, we have to support each other. We always say that we want people to to uh, you know make great art, and then when people do it, we don't support, so we definitely need to support and this this support don't cost anything, you don't even have to buy a battle of jack. But here's the thing, but if we win, which I, uh, uh, Daddy's Big Girl win, which is great, there's a uh, a $10,000 cash prize, which is great, which is amazing, which is going to go, uh, my, uh, is going to go uh, to my, uh, my portion is definitely going to go straight to uh, my feature that I'm writing called The V that we're going to be shooting. I'm, I'm, I'm working to be in production beginning of September, end of August, uh, at least in pre-production at that time. And I'm going to shoot this in St. Louis. Um, so, uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to go straight to that. Cause you, so by voting and helping us win this thing, it's going to go straight to another film that's going to uh, tell an aspect of our society that I think that need to be spoke about. And, um, yeah. And also we get flown down to ADFF, the American Black Film Festival put up and we're going to have a special screening, uh, a special screening sponsored by Jack Daniels, uh, mm -hmm. of, of Daddy's Big Girl, uh, during the festival, which is another accomplishment within itself, and I'm um, just being a part of it. I'm I'm humbled. I'm humbled and and thankful. But to win this thing would just help push forward art and help push forward my agenda of telling stories that need to be told about our people and not, uh, but, uh, uh, but of the people, not just our people, of people of all people. You know. You you know what's, it was funny is when you're a filmmaker or or just a, someone in the arts. There's no such thing as extra money because any money that you get basically goes to your art, right? So yeah. <laughs> you know? money I get goes to my art. Everything, everything comes in my pocket goes to my art. Like daddy's big second about that goes out of pocket, goes to my heart. Daddy's big girl, myself, uh myself and the brother Latham, we uh we we you know we 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 put out the bill. We took we took care of the bill for that. And, and um, you know? Independent filmmakers. We dream of hitting the lottery so we can make more movies. Exactly. Damn straight. Damn Damn straight. Lot, you know, yeah, we, oh man, I'm gonna go to Tahiti. I'm gonna go to I, I, no man, it's gonna get, oh man, hit this lottery. Oh, I can direct my feature, man. I get it. <laughs> we go, we think we're the only people who think about hitting the lottery and going to work. I know, right? Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm always thinking that. I'm always thinking, what would you do if somebody gave you, you know, some huge amount of money? And I'm, I'm always like, it, I would close up my house and write for the next year. That's oh, it. Man. That's all I would do. Yep. I, yeah. No kidding. Yeah, it's it's, it's awesome. Now, um, also, uh, I have a short film that 
uh, that's going to go in production really soon. And Brother Damien's going to be in it. I'm very excited. It's called The Good Neighbor. Yeah. And uh, you play a, a very key part of it. And so we're getting all of that together. So I'll, I'll be looking forward to working with you and the great Mio Shabin. Uh, will be involved in this uh, project too, as well as uh, Richie B. Jacobs, and we're still rounding out the cast. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, you know, anytime you get a chance to to do what you really love, it's a blessing. So yeah. I always look at it as uh, you know, um, just getting out there, grinding, and making it happen. So uh, I'm, I'll be looking forward to because uh, I, I already, you know, I w I watch everything you do, and I. I use people like yourself as a as an example, as you know, someone. You know, I really check out like your work and other people, and uh, you know, I get a lot of great ideas and a great, just um, you know, it really powers you to want to create yourself. And you know, because sometimes you know you can get down on yourself, yeah. you're not quite sure, and then you know, and then you get inspired by by. Uh, people you know and you're definitely a very inspirational person oh thank you very much. i appreciate it i really appreciate that thank you yes thank you very much man we push it man we all we got we all we got so we got to, you know we got to protect us we got to protect each other we got to work for each other and we got to make things happen for each other man and collaborate as much as possible you know and just you know with your art man we got we got to do it we also also, if you're an indie filmmaker and you're listening and you need somebody to be your cheerleader, you can call me. I, I will be your personal cheerleader and help you to get that project done. The uh, world needs more indie film. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank That's you. Sure. All right. So uh, one more one more time, the call to action. How can yes. people support? Yes, you can support by going uh, clicking on a link that's going to be in all my social media. Let me tell you my social media right now. Uh, it's real easy. It's Damien D. Smith, D A M I E N D Smith. Uh, my, that's my social media handle on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And the link, uh, the link to it, and also, um, it, you, also you can go to um, uh, G the Gentleman Jack um, <clears throat> that, uh, 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 short film competition, but. Um, that's another way to go, but you can click on the link in my social media. You can click on the link that's, uh, that the good brother Kente is about to put up, and you're going to vote for Daddy's Big Girl, um, and we're going to try to get us to go to uh, push us down to South Beach so we can get going and get some more stories. Again, vote for Daddy's Big Girl as many times if you would as you would like. At least you can vote on all your devices at least once a day. All right, I'm gonna definitely do that myself. Um, I saw, I noticed there was an Earl Smith. Is that a relative of yours? Oh no, he's not. Let me. Okay, thank you for thank you for uh, Earl Smith is not a, is not a relative, but he's a uh, he's a talented sound designer and composer. And I got to give it. And I, I want to give shouts out because I don't know if you guys enjoyed the score or if you heard the score, oh, but it's all an original score and it's done by a good brother named Earl Smith and Shayshawn McPherson. And these brothers, Shayshawn is a brother who does. Check out Shay Sean. He's a he's a uh, violinist who's out of out of New York who does who does work all around the world. Who's who's who scored things for the Classical Theater Harlem TV shows, all type of things. This brother came and did it for a song. So he uh he 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 played violins and and uh, Earl and Earl Smith, our, our sound supervisor. This brother uh, he mixed again. We had we were dealing with a uh, a three year old. So the levels of her voice sometimes are not, you know, always there. He was there. He he got in there, tinkered with everything, cleaned everything up, and also he plays the keys in the in, in the uh, in the film as well. So and also he he positioned, he composed how the, the score to the film. So uh, Shayshawn McPherson and Earl and uh, and Earl Smith, these brothers were the ones who's responsible for uh, our our score of um, Daddy's Big Girl. I want to thank them, and also I want to thank Edwin uh, Edwin Morrow. He's he did the graphic design for the uh, for our poster. Our poster is great. I love it. Um, you'll be able to check that out as well if you go to my social media. He's a, he's a phenomenal graphic designer as well. I, I would tell Earl after that score, I'd be like, "Yeah, we related." Uh, <laughs> what? I, I would tell Earl after he did that score for you. Yeah, we related. We, we, oh yeah, right. We cousins. <laughs> <laughs> He did an amazing job. So kudos to him. It was great. And everybody. 
uh, it's great work. Uh, so, Jen, um, how can people get you on social media? And also tell us about your website. Uh, people can get me on social media at Following Bliss pretty much everywhere. And uh, my website is Critical Laughs with two L's dot com. All right. And you can get me on Twitter at Kente F. And as well as you can go to our website, IndieRadio.org. That's I-N-D-Y Radio dot org. Uh, we will be back uh, next Friday with an all new episode of uh, the Spotlight, as well as uh, Tuesday we have a uh, we're doing a, a show on uh, the TV series Black Sales as well. Yeah. So ch- check that out. And uh, you know uh, we'll, we we we've been on hiatus for a little while, but we're going to be doing shows more regularly. Looking forward to that. And you guys have a great, beautiful weekend. We'll catch you next time. Right Thank here. you, Spotlight. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Peace. Peace.